One of the most unexpected upgrades with the iPhone 17 series surely was the added fast charging. For decades, iPhones were stuck with slow charging, and now we suddenly have 40 watt charging speeds with a cable. But what's the real world difference? And which charger should you choose? Let's take a look. Hey guys, Vic here with Phone Arena. First, here are four different USB C power delivery chargers. We had to first check if they can indeed deliver the promised speeds. So with a power meter, we plug in the phones and indeed we see that the charge can reach 36 watts, which is close enough to the advertised 40 watt speeds. The only exception is the iPhone Air. It only supports 20 watt speeds, probably because it's so thin and the heat from faster charging could be an issue. Since you may all have different chargers scattered around the house, the good news is that as long as the charger supports the USB-C power delivery standard, it will fast charge the iPhones. We tried it with Samsung's 45 watt fast charger with a 65 watt charging brick from the Asus Rogue phone with a few third party options as well. We tried the Spigen 65 watt arc station, the Basius Pico Go 45 watts, all are delivering the same 36 watt real world speeds. By the way, if you live and breathe smartphones, we have something for you. Phone Arena is dropping the ultimate coffee table book for phone geeks, a year long passion project packed with high res shots and deep dives into the most iconic, weird and game changing phones since the 2000s. And it's not just us. We've got hot takes and quotes from some of the biggest names in tech YouTube. Linus, Mr. Who's the Boss, Jerry Rig Everything, Super Saf, Max Tech, Austin Evans, Brandon Butch, John Rettinger, all weighing in on the devices that shaped the tech we use today. This is an exclusive limited run print coming this fall. Hit the link in the description to lock in the details and get on the email list before it's all gone. So with this cleared up, let's start the charging test. We plug in all the phones, start the test, and then periodically check the charge levels. So 15 minutes after the start of the test, we have the following. 31% charge reached on the iPhone Air, 38% on the iPhone 17, 39% on the 17 Pro, and 38% on the 17 Pro Max. The Air is the only outlier. The other three models charge at basically the same rate. So next up, 30 minutes in, and we do another check. We now have 54% on the Air, 67% on the iPhone 17, same on the Pro, 64% on the 17 Pro Max. You can definitely see the faster charging make a difference here. So we keep on going and next up we check the charge levels 45 minutes into the test. The iPhone Air is now at 71%, while the iPhone 17 has 82%, same on the Pro and the Pro Max has reached 81%. From here on, we noticed that the iPhone 17 model, the base model in our test, had the optimized charging option enabled, which actually slows down the charge to protect the battery long term. We had to turn it off and later rerun the test, but indeed we found that the base iPhone 17 charges at the same rate and time as the 17 Pro and the Pro Max. Finally, we registered the iPhone 17 Pro and iPhone 17 Pro Max reaching a full 100% charge in one hour and 16 minutes. And we had to wait for quite a bit more until the iPhone Air hits a full battery. The Air takes one hour and 36 minutes for a full charge. So let's put these numbers in context now. In 30 minutes, you get 64% charge on the 17 Pro Max, up from 57% on the 16 Pro Max from last year. So it's definitely a bit faster. And the full charge now takes one hour and 16 minutes, while it used to take one hour and 42 minutes on the 16 Pro Max. Again, an improvement. And compared to the Galaxy S25 Ultra, the iPhone 17 Pro Max hits 64% in 30 minutes and the Galaxy hits 68%. A full charge on the Galaxy takes one hour and nine minutes, while a full charge on the iPhone takes one hour and 16 minutes. The Galaxy is still a bit faster, but the difference between the two is tiny. Then compared to the OnePlus 13, the fastest charging phone in the US, we have the following numbers. The OnePlus hits 86% in 30 minutes versus 64% on the iPhone. A full charge takes just 43 minutes on the OnePlus, 
in one hour and 16 minutes on the iPhone. It's still a clear win for the OnePlus, but the gap is not as big as before. All right, finally, let's talk about that new charger Apple released along with the iPhone 17. This guy here, the 40 watt dynamic power adapter with 65 watt max. It uses the latest USB-C power delivery 2.2 standard and part of that standard is a new AVS protocol, which stands for adjustable voltage supply. Most Android flagships use a different standard called PPS or programmable power supply. The iPhone 17 does not support PPS, so it's a bit of a mess. But what happens if you use your old PPS charger, such as ones from Anchor, Ugreen or whatever? Well, you don't get the fine-grained real-time voltage adjustments of PPS on the iPhone 17, and that charger falls back to its predefined charging steps, but it is still fast charging. Technically, you might get a few minutes faster charging with an AVS charger, such as the Apple one, but the benefit seems too small to bother upgrading. We certainly won't be giving up on our good old Anchor Spigen, Basis, Ugreen, whatever you have chargers for a very marginal gain in speed.